I'm making this platformer called Ultra Nova, and I was thinking about enemy drone AI. I need drones that follow the player pretty reliable all over the levels. I need them to chase the player to get the panic feeling of the player being hunted and tracked down. I was thinking, should I do Unity nav mesh baking and use a nav mesh agent? I've used this many times before and it works good, but it requires baking a nav mesh, having agents and obstacles everywhere, and I've never tried it on a vertical plane with flying units before. Should I do flow field pathfinding? This would be the most obvious and maybe the most performant choice, but I've never tried it before and computing, caching and updating the vector cells seems pretty daunting. Or should I look at other A-star pathfinding? I should probably in that case stick to the Unity nav mesh instead of implementing my own nav mesh in A-star pathfinding or going for a third party solution. Should I do a node based grid all over the entire level and locate paths to nearby nodes? I did that somehow for my old top down racing game. I placed nodes around the racetrack and cars aimed for those nodes when you were in a certain region. It all sounded like a lot of work. For pure testing, I just aimed a drone towards the player and translated it forward. Not ideal. They went through walls and each other. Not impressive. <laughs> so I thought, what if I check a circle around the drone and steer it in different directions if the path ahead was obstructed? Well, that did not work very good either. In fact, it sucked. And then for some reason, I thought of a bloodhound dog. You know, those wrinkly faces, floppy ears and short legs that bring it down to the ground and sniff the floor and just tracks the player. Well, if it works for the police, it should work for me too. I will let the drone set a waypoint if it has a clear line of sight to the player. It flies towards the player with rigid body physics, so it won't go through walls or other drones. Since the drones have colliders, that will prevent them from overlapping. If the drone loses line of sight to the player, it starts to store the player's positions in intervals, as if the player had left a scent for a dog to track. The drone uses those tracking points as waypoints until it spots the player again. If it sees the player, it will discard all waypoints and repeat the exact same process. I was surprised how well this worked. I slowed down the drones and I did some testing, and all the drones followed me through complex paths, including obstructed pathways. It's so good, in fact, that you'll have to set parameters to let the drone know when to stop tracking. Otherwise, the player will be shocked to be reacquainted with a drone that it left behind at the start of a level as it finally catches up to you, because it will. For my purpose, this AI works amazingly well, and it's only a few simple lines of code. In a few occasions, the drones could get a bit stuck, so I implemented a simple method to detect if the drone is not moving even if it has waypoints, and in that case, it will insert a new random waypoint that is not obstructed somewhere near around it, so it can get unstuck. There are, of course, many limitations with this AI. It can't find the player without having seen the player at some point, and it's predictable. But both of those are actually totally fine for my platformer, as I want those behaviors so the player can use skills to avoid, trick, and evade the drones. Alright, so now let's have a look at the drone class and we'll actually look at the drone AI and the AI itself is not that many lines of code, but there's some extra stuff in here that we can ignore. But just to show you what was in here, if you're curious, it's that we're serializing some fields to expose the rotation speed, velocity, acceleration and damage. We also got some stuff here for the debugging, just so I could plot those orange and green dots and lines. And here's a target position that we can set from elsewhere. There's a proximity class that will just detect if something is within range of the drone, it'll set this target position. And by doing that, I'm actually picking the target position, which is at the feet of our character, and I'm adding vector 3 dot up because I want it in the middle of the character, so it's by the torso, roughly. And then we've got a private list of vector 3 here, and this is related to the AI. It's the waypoints that we'll be caching at some point later on. Here's just a bunch of references to the transform, animator, rigid body, health, and audio source. And then we've got some internal fields here just to have a little stock timer. We'll get to that, keeping track of the last position and a little wiggle waypoints. We can get into these later. And finally, I'm just caching the ints here of the different layer masks that will be uh, more performant rather than using strings. In the start method, which runs when the drone is created, it's getting the reference to the animator, the rigid body. It's calculating or it's just getting the ID for the different uh, layers and the masks here that we're going to be using for colliding. And then I've got a separate little component or a class called health that we have for ourselves for the drone has got its own health. And then I'm grabbing the audio reference here to the audio source. 
and uh, we're setting the remembering the drag as well we want to slow the drone down later on and then we have the on collision enter just so, so you know what's in here it's uh, checking if the drone has collided with nova i'm checking that by the layer id then we apply damage to the nova to the, our robot and then also we apply more than our current health of the drone so we destroy the drone when it's uh, collided so with that out of the way, let's look at the actual update loop now. And this, the update runs every frame in Unity. We can ignore this debug. That's just to plot the plots, uh, the dots, plot the dots. <laughs> uh, but here comes uh, one important line of code. If the target variable is null, then we return. We don't do anything. It's th if the drone has not seen our character at all, it'll just return out of this update loop. It will do nothing. But if it has seen it, it'll handle audio first, and that's just to set the little buzzing sound of the wasp-like sounds. And now we hit the AI code that you came for. Woohoo. So if there's a clear line of sight to the target, then we're gonna do something. We do this by calculating the target direction vector first. We take the target position minus transform position of this drone and then we get the normalized vector. And then we have to check here with the sphere cast if it's not hitting the world. We do this by creating a new ray from the transform position of the drone in the target direction that we just calculated. We shoot that ray with a sphere radius of 0.5, which is also the size of the collider of the drone. You could get the actual size of the collider instead. And then we shoot this ray or the sphere cast for the distance from the transform position, from the center of the drone, to the target position. We don't want to shoot it any further. And then we apply the world layer mask because we only want the sphere cast to hit the world. We don't want another drone to obstruct the visual path. Here's a little quirky thing though. If the sphere cast starts inside a wall, if it's right sniffing the floor or up against the wall, then it will not register a hit. So I also need to do a check sphere here. And it's just checking a sphere overlap on the transform position of the drone. And we add the target direction unit one vector there. And we also do the same radius 0 0.5 and we use the world layer mask. So either the sphere cast here has not hit the world or this little overlap check sphere does not hit the world. So we know that there's a clear line of sight now. If that is the case, we'll just empty the list of waypoints. Delete all the waypoints by doing waypoints.clear. That just clears the list. And then we add the target position as a waypoint. So the list at this point will only contain one single waypoint. Then we have to have a look. If there are waypoints already, in effect, the target has been seen and the distance between the last waypoint and the target is more than a threshold, then we're going to do something. So if waypoints.count is greater than zeros, so there are waypoints, and the vector3 distance from the last waypoint to the target position is greater than a threshold of 1, then we're going to add a new waypoint. This is important because you don't want to add waypoints every frame. That will really fill that list up super fast. And you could control this value. You don't want to go too high because then the corners will be not sharp enough or the, it'll, uh, it'll get stuck probably if, if you use too much of a threshold here. So I've found that one was pretty good. It can make the turns around the corners and it can keep the tracking and the list isn't that big. We're talking like 10 to 20, maybe 100 points at most. And the reason why we're checking if it has a waypoint first is because we don't want to start adding this unless we've actually seen the player first. And that would have happened in here. There would have been a clear line, sight, line of sight to the player. And if it has got at least one waypoint and the distance is greater than a certain threshold from the last waypoint, then we'll add this waypoint to the target position. That's what's creating all those extra dots there, the orange dots. And if we get to this line of code and there are still no waypoints, we're just exit out of this because nothing is true. The drone has not seen it. It's not been able to add any extra waypoints. So we'll exit out of it here. And then we have to make sure that if we get close enough to the waypoints, we're going to actually start deleting them. So if the distance between the transform position of the drone to the nearest waypoint or to the next waypoint is less than two in, in magnitude, then we remove the first waypoint in the list with waypoints.remove at zero. So we'll delete that one. We're close enough to that one. We're going to pick the next one if there is one. And also, if there was any chance to wiggle our way out of this before, if we were stuck, well, I'm going to set this wiggle waypoint exist flag to false again uh, we haven't actually seen that one yet because that comes in the physics update and that's everything there is to do in the update loop but we also have some stuff in the physics in this fixed update loop but well, let's have a look at this one as well this is the final section to make everything work and the fixed update loop is run by unity on every physics frame and by default that runs at 50 hertz so 50 times per second so it's independent from the actual frame rate and if you do rigid body stuff you should do that in this fixed update loop. Here we go. First of all, we're going to force the rigid body Z position to zero for our 2.5 
the platformer because freeze position is not reliable enough. So to change the position of a rigid body, you use RB is just our reference to the rigid body and we dot do dot move position and then we take the vector of the rigid body we leave x and y the way it is so that's the horizontal and vertical in our platformer but we force zero on z because we don't want to suddenly these drones to fly off on the side of the level and again freeze position is not reliable enough it could force itself out of that and here we go if in the physics loop if there are no waypoints then we're actually gonna just increase the drag of the rigid body to one because it'll come to a full stop. And every frame, every physics frame here, it'll just make sure that drag is one and then it'll return out of it. So it'll come to a halt. On the other hand, if there are waypoints, then we're gonna wa wanna make sure that the drag is left to where the original drag is uh, to make sure that it doesn't just stop the drone. So we reduce the drag again. And then we rotate the drone towards the target with rotation speed. We do this by doing rb.moverotation. That's how you do rotation of rigid body stuff. You have to, you could do transform.rotate, but you shouldn't because <laughs> it's a rigid body. So you have to respect the laws of physics or unity physics here. So we do rb.moverotation and we do a spherical lerp here of the quaternion. We're not gonna get into details of uh, quaternions because I don't know them. <laughs> so it's just uh, the rotation type. Instead of vectors, it's uh, rotation quaternions here. From the current rotation of the rigid body, and then we calculate the rotation that we want to aim towards. So this is done by quaternion.lookrotation. And we take the first waypoint and we subtract the position of the rigid body. So this is how we get the direction that we want to look in. And then how fast is it going to rotate? Well, we're going to take the rotation speed and then times delta time. And this is incorrect because it should say fixed delta time here. So we, because we want to make sure that it's running on the physics loop update speed there. That was way too many words for this. So basically we just rotate the drone towards the target at a certain speed that we've set. Okay, <laughs> all right. And then we have to add the force to accelerate the drone forwards. And we do this by using rb.addForce, transform forward. We only want to send the drone its, in its own forward direction so it doesn't strafe anywhere. And then we multiply that by acceleration and we set the force mode to acceleration. So it doesn't matter which weight or which mass the drone is, it'll always make sure that it can accelerate uh, at that fixed rate. We don't want to accelerate it more if it's already at max velocity. So we do this by checking rb.velocity.magnitude if it's greater than the velocity that we've set up here, up here, remember? So nine is the default speed, but we reduced that for the video, five. So if it's greater than the velocity, then we just fix that one down to, uh, we, we cap the velocity to calculate the normalized velocity direction and we multiply it by the max velocity or the velocity of the drone that we've set. Okay, so that is uh, most of the stuff and in rare occasions it could get stuck. So I had to do a little wiggle maneuver for that. And to explain what this is, last piece of code is doing here, this is the last we're gonna go through. And we calculate, first of all, we calculate the distance that we have traveled because we can't really rely on anything that's built into the rigid body. So we calculate the distance traveled by checking the last position distance to the current position of the rigid body. And then in this frame, we just store the last position at the current position. So we know how far we've traveled here. So if the distance traveled is less than one unit per second, and since it could be a bit confusing because you would think maybe it should be less than one here, but it's, we're running this multiple times per second in the fixed delta time here, so, or in the fixed uh, update loop. So we check if distance traveled is less just than time dot fixed delta time. It happens to be in this case, because you could put like one unit per second times this one, but that's redundant. So if we haven't traveled very far, and then we have to check if the stuck timer is not started, then we start it. This is the first time we come in here, we haven't traveled very far, so we'll just set stuck timer to time.time. .time. And if the drone has been stuck for more than n seconds, so if time.time .time is greater than stuck timer plus one second, we do, we could have anything here, two, three, four seconds, but we're just checking one second. Then we have to do something. Then we're gonna pick a random location in a circle around the drone with a radius of four. You could pick whatever value you want there because we don't want it to, to pick a, a random location outside of our level in the Z direction. So we just have to actual, the actual wiggle position will be the position of the rigid body drone position. And then we add this little new random location, but we only want to add the X and the Y. So the horizontal and the vertical position. And now we can check if the position is not overlapping with the world. And we do a, a physics dot check sphere at this wiggle position with a radius of 0.5, which happens to be the same radius of the actual collider. 
and then we only check it with the world layer mask. So only level components here, only level objects we should intersect with. So if this is true, that means that it did not overlap with anything. So we've found a little clear position here. And if there are no wiggle points, waste points set yet. So this is the first time we're in here, then we're gonna go waypoints and we're gonna insert a new waypoint at position zero in our list, which is the very first. Then it's gonna be the next waypoint for the drone. And then we're gonna put that to the wiggle position and we're gonna set this wiggle waypoint exist flag to true. And the reason why we insert this one at the very first point is because if it's stuck, if the corner was so tight that it could not track the player around that corner, it could get stuck. And now we've created a little wiggle position so we can exit away from the wall that it was stuck on and then it should hopefully latch on to the, to the next waypoint which is going to be waypoint 1 once it's reached this little wiggle waypoint. And we also have a separate condition here and that's because if there was a wiggle waypoint set and it could still not get unstuck, let's say it did find a, a way to wiggle but it's still stuck, it's still stuck there. Then we have to go here. We just replace the wiggle waypoint because you don't want to insert a new one because then it'll start inserting a lot of different wiggle waypoints and we want to make sure there's only one wiggle waypoint. So previous wiggle attempt failed, replace the wiggle waypoint with a new one. So we just replace the first in the list of waypoints with a new wiggle position. And then we reset the stuck timer so it can do this check again and come in here and start wiggling its way loose. And that's everything there is to this AI because the, the rest of the stuff here, maybe you want to have some uh, just screenshots of this one. That's just to calculate some of the different type of uh, velocity and pitch shifting and volume stuff for the drones when I do the audio. And then we just do uh, on proximity enter and exit. This is how I detect if the drone is close enough. It's doing a, a trigger entry and exit using a separate class called uh, proximity. So we're, it's calling this one. And here's just the code to draw the debug lines. So hopefully that can shed some lights on how this super simple AI works. There's no other stuff that you don't have to design anything on the levels. You don't have to place any nodes. You don't have to do any weird stuff. You don't have to do any nav mesh baking. You don't have to flow field calculate things. So if you're okay with the limitations, this should be a pretty cool AI, I think, for platformers. So it can locate the player, it can track it down, and it can hunt it forever. So you'll have to stop the drones at some point. Otherwise, the players are going to go insanely nuts and get caught up by a super slow drone. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you liked it. And give it a thumbs up if you liked the video. And if you want to help me out, just wishlist Ultra Nova on Steam, because that'll help me out a lot. And also consider becoming a Patreon. I share a lot of stuff there on my Patreon site for a lot of the tutorial stuff that I do. So patreon.com slash Infensia and give it a like if you like the video and hit the thumbs up. Well, that's the same thing. And subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye for now. Thank you for bringing me to life and for supporting the development of Ultranova by wishlisting it on Steam now.